Good morning. I welcome you to worship here at uh, Living Waters on this, uh, I guess, very, very uh, pleasant February morning. Um, much more pleasant than what sounds later in the week is going to be hitting our way. But uh, thank you for being part of this worship time today. Uh, to those of you who are guests, uh, a very special word of welcome to you and know that you are welcome to participate in everything and anything that takes place uh, here at Living Waters. A couple of announcements to uh, call to your attention this morning. First of all, that uh, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the season of Lent. There will be a 5 o'clock uh, soup supper, followed by worship services at, at 5.30 and 7. Uh, the information on that in the uh, splash pad, the blue piece of paper in your uh, worship folder. The World Day of Prayer event in Sartell, which is Friday the 24th of February at the First United Methodist Church. That is an ecumenical event. You are all invited to be part of that. Please note the... Um, the schedule for the Wednesdays of Lent, the, the soup suppers, um, that's on the splash pad also. Um, I want to say thank you to people who are helping with our worship today. First of all, uh, Declan back in the sound booth and the technology person uh, for setting up the mics and making sure that everything is working with our, with our systems here. Uh, musicians, we've got Mara and Aaron and Brad and Jan on the uh, piano. And I want to say a very special word of welcome and introduce the newest staff member here at Living Waters, and that's Karen Anderson. And Karen, would you stand up? Karen is our new custodian. So uh, you'll see her around here a lot, and uh, it's a great to, great to have you here and part of, uh, part of this ministry team, Karen. Um, next Sunday... Um, there is a, a special component to the worship service. Uh, Don Fortner and his group, the Old Town, the Lower Town Project, uh, will be leading a significant part of the worship service. Uh, so you are invited to make sure you are part of that. Um, and then other announcements that uh, that I have missed that you may be aware of. Anybody? Hearing? Pardon? Uh, let's begin our worship then with the call to worship as printed in the worship folder today. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our... from the rising of the sun to its setting. For you are life, and in your light we see light. We sing our opening song. Come, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
We sing our Kyrie as printed in the bulletin for today. Praise to God, who created the heavens and the earth, who gives light and breath to the nations, who makes all things new. Amen. Let us walk into the light of God's presence, confessing our sins before God and one another. Loving and faithful God, we confess that we have not lived as your holy people in the world. We have closed our hearts to your love. We have resisted your light. We have failed to proclaim your mercy. Forgive what we have done and what we have left undone. Heal us with your abundant grace and help us walk as children of the light. Amen. Hear God's word. You are my own, my beloved. We belong to Christ, and through the power of the cross, our sins are forgiven. God is faithful and will strengthen us so that our light may shine before others and we may be God's holy people in the world. Amen. Remembering that you are a child of God, please make the sign of the cross on your forehead. We sing verse 2 of our hymn of praise. assembling over, over here. Uh, they sang at the first service too, so uh, if they happen to leave after the choir anthem, they're not, uh, they're not just skipping out. They have, uh, they have been here and uh, we thank them for singing today. Yeah. 
Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is, is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and go and destroy? A lion of Judah. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And as Jesus our Messiah, forever goes He loves. He does. 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 He First reading today is from the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud, now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Here ends the reading. This time I invite the uh, children who are here to come forward for a a brief children's message as we sing the This Little Mida, Light of Mine.
Good morning. Are you wide awake this morning? Well, that's to be determined, huh? Yeah, yeah. I brought something with me that I think you might recognize. And maybe you even have it in your room. You know what this is? A nightlight, yeah. And what, what do they do? When do they light up? At night when it's dark, huh? You have to turn them on? Okay. Let's see if... You have one in your bedroom that shines, huh? <gasps> Look at that. It comes on. And if I point it up like that, it goes off. Because this has a little sensor on it. When it's, when, the light, when it's light outside, it doesn't come on. But if I make it dark, it comes on. Now, why do you think... Why do we have a light in our rooms? So it's not too dark. So it's not too dark. Yeah. Because darkness can be kind of scary, can't it? Yeah. You th you th yeah, yeah. And the nightlight keeps the monsters away, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they're for. That's why we use them. Okay, so you got a brand new one. You are lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Very lucky. You got three of them. Well, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And light has been, is really important during our time here in church. Some Sundays ago, or last Sunday, in fact, there, was, there were stars hanging over here. And, and those stars were the light that made it possible for the wise men to come and see the baby Jesus. Today we're going to hear about another light that was in Jesus' life. And it's, it's a big, long word, and I don't even think you're going to remember it, and your, your mom and dad won't probably remember it either. It's called transfiguration. That's a long word, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But just think about it as light. When you hear transfiguration, think light. And I want you to remember that, that Jesus has promised that he is going to be with us and keep us safe, like this nightlight keeps us safe in our bedrooms at night. Well, thank you. You like my socks, huh? Yeah. They got Paul Bunyan and the Babe the Blue Ox on them. They're almost as bright as a nightlight, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so can we pray? Loving Jesus, come into my life and give me light and keep me safe. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats, but before you do, let me give you some candy. Can you take one for yourself and then take one for to give to somebody else, okay? Take two. You are welcome. All right. Okay, thank you for coming up today. gospel for today is recorded in the 17th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the first verse. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. 
Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up. Do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you in the name of our risen and living Lord Jesus. Amen. One of the things I could have asked and didn't in the children's sermon is how many of you big kids have nightlights at home? Let's let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, We have them for basically the same reason that the little kids like them. We like to be able to see a little bit in the darkness of night because the darkness can be scary. Our biblical faith ancestors remind us that one of the primary ways that God speaks and that God makes a divine presence known to God's people on earth is by revealing glimpses of divine light. Sometimes that light is as soft as a night light. Other times, it's as bright and powerful as a bolt of lightning. The first lesson that was read today was Moses up on the mount getting the second tablet, the second installment, I should say, of the tablets of the law. Moses begs God in that whole storyline to somehow be able... uh, to let, that God would let Moses see God, as if that was going to be such a big help for him as he led this people. And God does offer Moses a peak. The peak that Moses gets is that he gets to see the backside of God. And after descending the mountain with those tablets of law in his hands, His face was emblazoned by the glory of God. It was so radiant, it emitted so much light that the people of Israel were actually afraid of Moses. I truly believe that God is always present. Always present in creation and God is always present in human life. But there are and there will be times when God wants to bring special illumination. It may be in the form of an event, a messenger, or a message. And when God wants to do that, God does not hesitate. God put a star in the sky to guide the Magi to the Christ child's birthplace. It was the light of angels stars singing in the hillside that drew the shepherds to be the first visitors to the Christ child. The first words spoken by God in the Bible, first chapter of Genesis, are the words, let there be light. My memory can sometimes be selective. I don't remember the occasion, nor do I remember the person who shared this truth with me. But I remember what was shared. And it is this. Remember in the dark what you have seen in the light. Remember in the dark what you have seen in the light. I I believe there's no more laser-pointed lesson to be learned from the transfiguration of Jesus than this lesson. Jesus didn't come to enchant people. He demanded that they believe. But on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus changed that for just a moment. Because no longer did those three disciples, Peter, James, and John, simply have to believe Jesus and who he was and who he said he would be. They saw. 
They saw in real time. They saw with their own eyes. Faith was not necessary in that brief encounter, in that brief moment. They saw with their own eyes Jesus speaking with the pillars of their faith, Moses and the prophet Elijah. They knew it because they could see it. And then, boom, the vision vanished. And almost as quickly did the memory, the memory of what they had seen, drop from their sight. If we were to follow the timeline of Jesus in the Gospels, you would hear that the very next day they'd come down from the mountain and a large crowd was gathered around them. And within that crowd was a man whose son was possessed by a demon. The disciples tried to cast out the demon. And they tried and they tried and they tried and they couldn't do it. And they finally brought the child to Jesus and he does cast out the demon. A reminder. A reminder that the mountaintop may be a place of inspiration. <clears throat> excuse me, of inspiration. But what's needed in the valley is hard work. Perspiration. There's a balance between the transfiguration event, the, the mountaintop experience of those disciples, followed by their personal failures in the valley to be who they thought they ought to be. A little further context to show just how real life and real time intersect in this transfiguration gospel. Just over a week before this, Jesus had shared with his disciples that he's going to go to Jerusalem. And when he gets to Jerusalem, he's going to be arrested. He's going to be persecuted, tortured, and put to death. And after three days, he would rise again. A day after this transfiguration event, the same day that the disciples were trying to cast out demons and couldn't, the gospel says these very same disciples were arguing amongst themselves who was going to be the greatest when Jesus came into his kingdom. And when the fateful dark nighttime of the arrest of Jesus comes, the memory of the transfiguration did not prevent them from scattering like goose down in the wind. Nor did it keep Peter from denying that he even knew who Jesus was. I know we have all heard testimonies from people who have had life-changing events. Something has happened that's changed not only how they look at life, but how they live their lives. And they almost become evangelists with a small e about this event and what it is that it has transforming power in his head. That event becomes frozen in time and also frozen into the future because it is so transformative. When I was a student at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Jan and I attended a Billy Graham evangelism event at the State Fairgrounds, at the grandstand at the State Fairgrounds. We were there a couple of nights, and uh, you know what happens at Billy Graham events. There's a call, and people come forward and give their lives to Christ. They are nurtured. There's a whole program that follows that. And it seeks to build disciples. I also remember that later on that fall, this was in the summertime, later on that fall, there was a bank robbery in Minneapolis, and the bank robber was quickly apprehended. But the strange thing was that this bank op robber told the police officers who had arrested him that he had been converted at a Billy Graham crusade at the state fairgrounds. And that is why he didn't use a gun when he was robbing the bank. Hmm. <laughs> It begs an important question. What role does Jesus play in my life? What role does Jesus play in my life? Maybe you've had the experience 
of rearranging furniture in your house and then forgetting that next night or that very night where the new locations are. Stubbed toes, bruised knees, maybe some toppled vessels. Lots of things can happen. Why is it that it's so much easier to find a place, a location, in the daytime than in the night? Because we carry what we have seen and what we come to know in the light into the darkness. I don't need to tell you that there is more than enough darkness in our lives. There's more than enough. But I will tell you again, remember. Remember in the dark what you have seen in the light. Confronted with a crisis in your faith walk, things held in absolute certainty are now raising spiritual questions. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, we sing. Remember in the dark what you have seen in the light. The personal darkness of the loss of a job loss of a home, the feeling that you're losing control over parts of your life, your deep independence. Paul says our strength is made known, God's strength is made known in our weakness. Remember in the dark what you've seen in the light. Or maybe you've come face to face with a steep mountain a very steep mountain. You were way in over your head. And in your mind, not even a miracle is going to get you through it. Isaiah says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Remember in the dark what you have seen in the light. Or maybe you hear the very bad news that your diagnosis is of a terminal disease. Or a loved one receives that diagnosis. The Apostle Paul says, who can separate us from the love of God? Gives a whole laundry list of things, including death. And he concludes, nothing shall be able to separate us. Remember in the dark what you have seen in the light. Uh, Let's flip the coin. Success has come into your life. And with it, an attitude that I did it. I did it. The words of Jesus, consider the lilies of the field. They neither sow nor reap, but God cares for them. Remember in the dark what you have seen in the light. The body of Christ, the church, is not called to invite people out of the darkness into the light so much as it is called to bring light into the darkness. I sometimes think we spend much too much time building our booths, our safe temples of light, if you will, our church buildings and our communities, but we fail to spend anywhere near that much time bringing that light into the dark tunnels that are all around us. The transfiguration does not call us to be a light at the end of the tunnel. It doesn't. It doesn't call us to be that light waiting for people to to, to stumble their way toward us. The church takes the light of truth, the gospel and the glory of Christ boldly into that dark tunnel 
because there is always going to be a tunnel lurking right outside our circle of light. The disciples needed to hear the voice of God coming from the cloud. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Same words that were spoken at his baptism. These words were not spoken about Moses or Elijah. They were spoken about Jesus. And if we are to enter the tunnel at the end of the light, if we are to poke new windows, not simply drill little tiny peepholes into the darkness of the world, if we are to live our lives in the light and lead others toward Christ, then I think we have no choice but to remember in the dark what we have seen in the light. Carl Jung, a psychologist, psychiatrist, talks about meaningful coincidences. And by that he means sometimes things come to us as coincidence and we are ready to accept and absorb them into our lives. We almost see them as serendipitous. I would give another word to that. I would call these glimpses of God's glory. Night lights of God's grace that are the very substance of our memory, our remembrance, when that is all that we have to draw from. If you are a golfer, you may have heard of a very legendary golf instructor by the name of Harvey Pennick. And he was coaching a woman who went on to win the Texas Amateur Women's Championship. He coached her right up to the minute of her tea time. And when that time came, the woman said to Pennick, well, I have to go out and play now. And he replied, what do you mean you have to go out and play now? You get to go out and play now. We don't have to enter the tunnel at the end of our light. Rather, we get to enter the tunnel at the end of our light. I believe that when we remember in the dark what we have seen in the light, the grace, the love, the power of God will more than sustain us. Indeed, it will allow us to thrive even in the darkness. Remember in the dark what we have seen in the light. Amen.
gathered together as God's people. I invite you to open your hearts to this loving God, to share your thoughts, your prayers, your requests, and your thanksgivings. Gracious God, we pray that you would embolden all of us to witness to the majesty and the mercy of your Son, Jesus. Be with us, not only as we walk in faith, but as we live out our faith in the one, the only one, who can give life. Lord, in your mercy. Be with your whole creation, Lord. From the deepest parts of the ocean to the tallest mountains, bless the work of all those who seek to not only preserve, but to care for your creation. Make us good stewards, good stewards of the earth and the skies and your universe. Lord, in your mercy. Today we pray for wisdom for all who are in positions of authority, especially governmental and legislative authorities. Be with our mayor and local leaders, our governor and our state legislators, our president and our senators and representatives. Use them as instruments of your love. Use them as instruments of your mercy and grace and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Give shelter to those who lack safe homes, Help us to bring fair housing to those whose dwellings do not keep out the cold or the heat or the snow or the rain. Be with those who are homebound. Be with those who are sick and isolated. And today we pray especially for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for Ellery as she mourns and her family mourns the death of her grandpa Vernon. We pray that you would be with and sustain the family of Nicholas and his grandparents, Will and Andy Towner, as they mourn his death. Make us mindful, Lord, that you will always have the last word, and that word is resurrection. For those who are suffering long-term illnesses, our prayers go up for you, Lord. We name in our hearts Arlie, but we also name others who are known only to us. Be their strength and be our strength, Lord, in your mercy. 
receive our thankfulness for those who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered us to be your people, the forebearers of our faith, those who have planted the seeds that you have so tenderly nourished. We pray now that those seeds may bear fruit to your glory. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you. We sing our holy, holy, holy in preparation for our communion. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Good and loving God, as you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for others. May your love be our inspiration, your wisdom our guide, and your truth our light through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to all, saying, Drink all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God are prepared to be shared with you. We invite all of you to come forward to receive this gift of God's grace. Please come down the center aisle. I invite the communion assistants to come forward at this time. Um, take a communion cup, receive the bread. There is non or gluten-free, corn-free wafers available for those who desire that. The first chalice will be the wine. The second chalice is the grape juice. Come for all is ready. Come and experience the grace and love and presence of Christ.
Jesus risen will bring in the kingdom. Jesus risen will bring in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood may it strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting his peace be with you amen the Lord be with you let us pray together ever faithful God you have taken us again into your arms and nourished us as your own lead us and guide us that we may share our bread and your healing light with those who hunger and thirst. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand for the singing of our benediction song, our sending song.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.